Insecurity. Bandits return to Kaduna Abuja Highway, kidnap over 30, as 10 feet killed in Kasina village. And corruption. Probing Umar Farouk, Edu, Arthur's, enhances Nigeria's global image. Justice Ahiako. I am. Bola Oba and this is Plus Politics. Bandits on Sunday attacked travelers on the Abuja Kaduna Highway and abducted over 30 people, witnesses, and community leaders said the abduction took place at Dogonfili near Katari along the Kaduna Abuja Highway in Kashia local government area of Kaduna State. This is the first time in more than 10 months when the security along the Abuja Kaduna Road Atway was breached. A former lawmaker, Senator Shehu Sani, confirmed the attack on his ex page. He disclosed that two of his friends narrowly escaped, narrowly escaped the kidnap, narrowly escaped being kidnapped by the bandits. Sunny said, quote, just when we felt safer, last night Sunday kidnappers returned to the Kaduna Abuja Road. They blocked the road and abducted scores of persons at 9 p.m. near Katari village. Two of my honorable friends from both the ruling and opposition parties had to run through the bush like Hussein Bolt. But despite this incident, there is a stronger security presence along the route than it used to be in the past, unquote. Similarly, suspected bandits have left 10 persons killed and several others wounded at Kukar, Bangida village in Jibia, local government area, of Kasina State on Thursday. Among those killed were the Kukal Babangida village head Zorin Kasina, along with his four biological children. Residents told reporters that the bandits invaded the village in the early hours of, of Thursday at 1.30 a.m. when most of the residents were deeply asleep. The Kasina State Police Command was yet to react to the attack at the time of filing this report. Joining us to look at this is a security expert, Augustine Heger, and a public affairs analyst, Mohamed Abdullahi. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Hello. Thank you, good evening, Nigerians. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Good evening, uh, Nigerians. It's my pleasure. How would you start? Given uh, this saddening reportage from from the Abuja Kaduna Act Six and the uh, Kasina State, what would be your initial response to to these reports? Yes, it's quite uh, very unfortunate uh, because uh, in the it's quite very unfortunate because in the past two years, if I'm correct, um, the, the issue of, uh, you know, bandits or kidnappers on the Abuja Kaduna Highway uh, looked initially stemmed, I mean, initially stopped, because I'm a regular traveler on that highway. In fact, at least every two months or so, I'm on that highway traveling between Abuja and Kaduna. So I'm telling from experience that at least in almost the past 24 uh, uh, months, uh, we've not had this kind of occurrence of uh, kidnappings on that way. And it was basically because there was a whole lot of patrol uh, on that highway. You know, um, there were many uh, security posts, I think, I mean, for what I've seen so far, uh, there are many security posts along that highway from the stretch of Abuja up until Kaduna. Particularly where this um, kidnap, uh, I mean, this recent kidnap took place. That Qatari axis is actually very, very dangerous, you know. They are very, very dangerous. Seriously, that has been 
That Ketaga axis as well was where the tree was attacked uh, almost 24 months ago, you know. So that axis has been very dangerous, uh, I mean, in terms of uh, banditry and then uh, kidnapping. Uh, so and like I said, I've seen a whole lot of um, uh, security apparatuses. I mean, even soldiers come here and there, patrols uh, here and there, you know. So it's quite disturbing that um, this recent attack took place, I mean, three or four days ago, and at alarming rate. Mohammed. Uh, 30 people at a go, you know. If the paraphernalia of security on that road is as pronounced as you've just stated, and this is a first-hand account as somebody who often used the road, one would then presuppose that it's about time that the security architecture would look beyond just enhancing the presence of uh, security personnel on that road. Because if the intelligence were to be right, the people who attacked to orchestrate that unfortunate incident would have been would have been pinned down before getting to the road. You know, because as much as you know, you have also validated the opinion shared by Senator Sheryl Sony that notwithstanding the breach, the presence of security on that road seems to be better than it used to be. But this has also shown us that if we're just waiting, believing that because we have high presence of security personnel, these guys may look for, you know, a lacuna of a sort and strategically just eat that point and eat a run of a sort. What do you think? Yeah, I think the challenge is that um, it's very obvious that perhaps these criminals, like I used to, like I choose to call them, seems to be a bit smarter than our security apparatus. Yeah, it's there's no two way about it, you know, because um, this is a recurring issue. You know, uh, the, the Englishman says once beaten, twice shy. But come on, we've been beaten more than like a hundred times or even a thousand times. Kidnapping seems to be like the order of the day. So. Do we want to believe that these few criminals are more are smarter than our security apparatuses, our security agencies? Perhaps it is so, even if we don't want to admit. Because I think, like you rightly mentioned, what we need to do and what we, uh, I mean, need to do fast is go beyond just human security. What do I mean by human security? I mean, like um, having. Uh, I mean, uh, so soldiers camp or police camps at strategic location across the whole. That would definitely not solve the problem. Seriously. Because these guys know they are human beings. Yeah, they know that perhaps there will be a time that they will be pressed. There will be a time that they will fall asleep. There will be a time that perhaps there will be other issues across the country that they need to be really quick to go and attend to. So, bam, what if they are not there? They strike. That's what it is. Okay, but what uh, we need okay, to really Mohammed, look at. I get back to you. Uh, let, let me also uh, bring your colleague, uh, Augustine Neda, in. Uh, Augustine, uh, what would be your take of this uh, unfortunate uh, incident, uh, both Kaduna, Abuja, Road Act 6, and uh, in Casina State? Your first, your first uh, take. Hello, Augustine. Is Augustine down? Okay. Uh, Mohammed. Yes. Oh, okay. Um, there's a whole, there's a whole lot of network issues. Yeah. I, I, I think you know. Just let's take it as, <laughs> as we get it. <laughs> Is that Augustine? I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, fantastic, Augustine. Okay, uh, Augustine, yes. uh, how do you want to start? Your initial response to all the remarks, you know, thus far made, you know, on the show. Thank you. Uh, that line is crap.
Cracky, Cracky, Cracky. No. Hello? Can you hear me, sir? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can now. All right. So, uh, what I'm saying, my own take is that uh, security in the most, even in the most secure nations, they still have times where they have lapses. I am not uh, uh, corroborating with the Nigerian police, or maybe they have some deficiency that led to this. But what I want to analyze objectively is that from the time this, the, the guys operated, uh, the, the, the day of the week, it was a Sunday from the, what I've seen so far, it was a Sunday, I was around 9 p.m. And they said the operation lasted for 45 minutes. And that is that 45 minutes, like up to 10 o'clock in the evening. I think um, the, the, they have actually profiled the system because these people look for opportunity to strike. They profile the system, and we all know that Sunday on Sundays, People don't travel much. Or you see, sometimes you travel a long distance, they don't even find law enforcement along the route. If you are someone who travels a lot every Sunday or every weekend, it's a quiet time. And this time was even a festive time. So I want to see that they took opportunity uh, of, 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 of the day of the week and the timing too. They have done their survey, they have done their intelligence, they have done their profiling before this, this incident happens. That is my own understanding of why this happened. From the time uh, uh, I'm I'm yes, sir. You are a security expert. And to be honest with you, nobody can fault the logic of your submission. It's perfect, you know. Uh, but it, it is, however, also speaking to the fact that if an expert like you can analyze the fact that those guys struck when after the, the most have profiled, uh, you know, the operational methodology of the security operatives in that axis, somebody in the manage, at the management level of those who are there, or those who posted them there, ought to be playing, playing scenarios too. You know, scenarios that, you know, there may be days like that, off peak, that these guys may be opportunistically prepared to take advantage of their relaxed security architecture. Do, don't you people do that in, 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 in that, in that, uh, in, in your trade? I, I'm just thinking aloud now. I'm not, and I'm sorry, no, you, I, I'm, I'm sorry if it seems like I'm putting you, I'm putting you. No, uh, no, no, sir, you're, you're absolutely correct. I was getting down to that. You know, you have to look at all uh, areas before you know where to throw your blame at. You are actually 100% correct on this. Uh, this is something that they need to do from their strategic and operational level to know the level of, in fact, we can see that all the military coups that have happened in Nigeria happen on weekends. And most of the high level incidences against security happen during the weekends. So this is enough to inform the authorities that they should prepare better, especially in that axis of the road when we've had a lot of problems. So I will say that I am not letting out uh, those in authority regarding uh, the security of that, uh, that, that, that route. They ought to have done something on their own. The government is aware and they have placed uh, their law enforcement to do something there to, to save lives and property along that route. So I, we are not shifting the blame away from our own Nigerian police or whosoever the authority uh, 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 concerning that area. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, uh, we, uh, yes, I'm not shifting my blame because we cannot. The government have profiled. These people have been delegated to do their job. People have been assigned in that job. So where were they? We are talking about 45 hours operations on a major uh, for, for, route. 45 minutes. Uh, uh, yeah, Augustine. Please, please, 45 minutes. I'm sorry about that. 45 uh, minutes. I know it was a sleep. I know it was a sleep at times. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, but, it's a sleep. Yeah, so 45 but, minutes operation is too much for that. We don't have a response force. For 45 minutes, they are operating. Five minutes is enough, enough for bad guys to do what they want to do, they, what they want to do. But we are talking about almost an hour. So and Augustine, uh, Augustine let, let me just quickly add something to uh, the fantastic points you're making. Uh, I think it's imperative at this juncture to let uh, li our viewers know that uh, it may not only be the police. It, we may have, uh, we may have uh, roadblocks that are manned by by uh, the army or some other services too, because uh, it, may not, it, it may be a bit unfair 
to just um, load, to just load it all on the police. Uh, the security architecture, especially in that specific particular uh, axis, uh, transcends the place alone. I want to believe that. Yes, I think I... Okay, let, let, let me go to Mohammed. Mohammed is a regular user of that road. Uh, Mohammed. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, your, your, your factual, this thing will, will be helpful to myself and, uh, and Augustine here as somebody who regularly uses the road. Uh, is it only the police or the, the uh, armed, the other security agencies also deploy personnel? Uh, in that axis? No, definitely it's not only the police. In fact, uh, the most visible uh, uh, security apparatus that you find on the road since the attack, I mean, the train attack has even been the army. Uh, you have a Nigerian army base actually even uh, not too far from, I mean, the scene of the, the, the train attack, which is closer, I mean, the scene of the train attack, but closer, much closer to the to the road than the train track, you know. So you have a lot, and you have even the Nigerian Army uh, uh, patrol van. Sometimes you see two, three, four on both lanes of the road. Mohammed, uh, perhaps Mohammed. Yes, as somebody who, according yes, to uh, according to you, somebody who often uh, uh, you know travels between Abuja and Kaduna, and given the seeming lousy coincidence that you have just uh, you have just painted for me now, uh, which is the fact that the Sunday incident happened somewhat proximate to the point where that infamous train attack took place, just about the same vicinity, uh, and I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Is there a particular topographical or any that could make that area that vulnerable? You, you, you should know as somebody who... Nothing really spectacular. Seriously, from my continuous um, you know, usage of that road, nothing really, really underwhelming or overwhelming in that area. In fact, what we just have is that perhaps it's a bit rocky and then it's a bit like a valley but like I mentioned earlier, there is even an army base that has been instituted there since the train attack. I can really confirm this. You understand? So, you know, but like I said, we keep happening on humans, human security. And at this age and time, we need to go past that. We need to go past that. Seriously, while human security is fantastic, you can't do it, you can't do it without it. But we need to employ a whole lot of technology. And we need to be very discreet about that. It, it is not fine for me, even though I'm not a security expert, that whenever the army buys, for instance, a particular, uh, what's it called, machine, or a particular uh, aircraft, or a particular uh, security uh, machine, it goes all over the news. I don't think it's a wise idea. You understand? Because, you know, we need to be very discreet about what we do. Um, I mean, in terms of our security agencies. And at this age and time, we need more of technology. There are, you know... Uh, oh, okay, uh, okay, Mohamed, Mohamed, uh, Mohamed, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. I'm having two uh, intellectually engaging uh, guests to, uh, this evening, and, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm the happier for it. Uh, Augustine. Hello, yes, Augustine. I'm with you. Yeah, fantastic. Yes, I'm Augustine, with you. you are the security yeah. expert here. Yeah. And like yes. Mohammed just uh, opined, you know, yes. women, that is, human intelligence is good, uh, but technology yes. now has so democratized, democratized uh, open source, that is, OSINT, open source intelligence, yes. that uh, people like you who should be in the know should also uh, be giving advice now to. Uh, security agencies that this sit down look uh, and wait for the bad guys to come and attack uh, yeah. portraiture is becoming untoward. Why? Why yeah. are we not using intelligence to yes. 
Uh, uh, what would be your response to my uh, novice's opinion? Yeah, it, it's good because um, from uh, the description of the area, what Mohammed just said, the topography is actually favorable for criminal activities like that. It says rocky and there's a valley there. So it, it, it makes that place uh, vulnerable and it also shows that it's a getaway point for them. Where you have valley, you have rocky, it's a place they can conceal themselves easily. So, uh, having known this, even Mohammed, as not a security expert, as he's able to even access the rich there and tell us uh, what is the topography of that area. I think we law enforcement because they are in terms security. DSS and law enforcement is number one. Oh, Lord. Profiling should be done by the Nigerian police and the DSS. What Mohammed is saying, these are the capabilities that you build. And intelligence is good, but intelligence has to be actionable. And that's one point they must note. Another point is that intelligence led policing is very important. In fact, it's key to, to, to modern day policing. Intelligence led policing is very, very important. It's strategic. And this, if, since they've, they've known that this area is vulnerable or the whole road is vulnerable, they need to build the capabilities of intelligence led policing along that area. Well, and like you said, the open source policing, they can, they can uh, incorporate uh, this uh, open source thing that they will get uh, inf information randomly all around those people living there. So where, where it comes to a point where we need to ask, how do they spend our budget in terms of securing lives in that kind of an area? So the second point I will make is that I am concerned with the response time. I am very concerned and disappointed with the response time. Okay, if let's, let's agree that in all of the things they have done, something to still happen, then the response time, the response force should be able to help us out of that situation. Response can be by using vehicles. It can also be such that you will use very little manpower to do very much. This is, a, this is effectiveness. Augustine, uh, Augustine, to, yes, to, to agree with you, uh, you know, uh, it, it, uh, it, what took 45 minutes? And apart from that, they cutted away, practically took away 30 human beings, reportedly. 30. Oh, they, they, must, have had it, they must have had the whole day to themselves. At least, in, in so, terms of security vulnerability, from what you have said, as, a, as an expert, yes. that five minutes is too much. Five minutes is even too long. I don't know what they will tell their commands. That we know some of the bank robberies, they have a duration of five, ten minutes, and they will cut away with a lot of resources. But we are talking of human beings stopping the vehicle, taking them out, channeling them through where they need to pass to where they want to keep them. And it happened one, two, three to thirty human beings and to a particular place. I mean, it's something we really need to. It's not something that we can defend anybody. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, yeah. just just using my journalistic, you know, uh, the, the the unfortunate thing about some of the traits that some of us get involved in is that uh, yeah. just using my journalistic mind uh, and as a, you know, uh, playing the skeptic now, uh, is he speaking to maybe conspiracies or some some I I, I don't know. Okay, uh, uh, my, my back room told me uh, we, it's about time we ended this segment. Uh, gentlemen, I really want to say thank you. Mohammed, uh, it's been lovely engaging with you. Thanks for the information. And uh, Augustine, uh, we surely will be having you guys back. We couldn't even go as far as Casina, uh, Kaduno, uh, Abuja, Kaduno road eventually took most of our time thank you we're going to short break now my, pleasure, my pleasure my pleasure thank you thank you Mr. we're going to short break now and when we're back the show goes on